mom came in and removed the child when she's not supposed to have any contact herself with the child due to CPS. I don't think plaintiff is taking this seriously, Your Honor, and I don't think he's giving respect to this court. Plaintiff is not taking this matter seriously. The child has been reporting that she's being beaten with coat hangers by the plaintiff and being pinched by her siblings, and the plaintiff is not doing anything to stop this. She's not wanting to go back home to the plaintiff. My client denies the allegations regarding the doctor's appointments, the lice. I don't have a... Uh good relationship with my three kids with Carson A. I don't have an emotional uh, connection with them. As my other kids, they don't look nothing like me. I'm not trying to not pay anything. I just want to make sure that all of the numbers is correct. There's been somewhat of a disconnect between mom and the children. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Robinson on behalf of the plaintiff, Ms. Smith on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to change custody. Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> As I stated last week, we have a situation where <clears throat> uh, Mr. Shelley <clears throat> had physical custody of the child until last August when he uh, committed a, a rather serious assault against the child and was charged with felony child abuse. <clears throat> Last December, he pled guilty to third degree child abuse and was placed on a year and a half probation, um, <clears throat> condition of which he was to have no contact with the child. He has since been released from that probation and wants to return to uh, the situation as it existed before uh, he was before the criminal charges were brought. <clears throat> He's had no contact, uh, significant contact with the child since last August. There was no juvenile court intervention, so there was no reunification plan. <clears throat> and what? The plaintiff is asking that the court set a brief evidentiary hearing so we can establish that <clears throat> the, well, the, the facts we've alleged for the record. And we'd also ask the court to interview uh, this child who is who will be uh, 13 in a couple of months. Okay, thank you. Ms. Smith, what's your response? Uh, yes, Your Honor. So my client prior to uh, the assault charge in August of 2023 was granted sole physical and legal custody of the minor child. Um, the plaintiff was out of the state of Michigan and out of her child's life for whatever um, the matter may have been for six years. We would argue that there has not been a change of circumstance, um, especially since when the incident happened with my client. The child was removed from his care and was to be placed with uh, his aunt and uncle. And uh, the plaintiff came in and removed the child without CPS's permission from the home of his aunt and uncle. My client also signed a power of attorney for the child to go be with the aunt and uncle. Uh, mom came in and removed the child when she's not supposed to have any contact herself with the child due to CPS. So we would argue that there has not been a change of circumstance for uh, to grant an evidentiary hearing in this matter. Okay, thank you. Well, in this particular case, the court does note that obviously there's substantial uh, allegations in this case. And uh, again, those are, again, substantiated by the fact that the defendant did plead guilty to child abuse fourth in this uh, particular matter. The court does believe that the Vibarka threshold has been met for an evidentiary hearing. The court is going to refer the matter to the referee for an evidentiary hearing. And further in view of the assault, which uh, the defendant pled guilty to, the court will suspend parenting time until the referee makes a determination at after the evidentiary hearing. So... Uh, Court will do the order of referral in this particular matter. And uh, Mr. Robinson, if you would do the order as it relates to suspending parenting time pending that hearing. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Um, okay. Thank you. 
Uh, Ms. Smith? Your Honor. Are you, Ms. Smith, are you with legal aid? No, no. I'm not. I'm retained. Okay. <clears throat> I can look you up then and know where to send the order. Yeah, I did send you an email, but yes, you can look me up. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thank Your Honor. You. Ready Thank to go. you, Your Honor. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Snyder on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to enforce and amend final consent order for custody, parenting time, and support. Uh, there has been an answer filed. I did, did you receive that, Mr. Snyder? I, I did, Your Honor. Okay. Now, as I read the uh, pleadings, uh, thought came to my mind is obviously exchanging the child at 12 o'clock uh, noon does seem to present some problems. Why would it not be just easier to exchange the child at 6 p.m. rather than 12 p.m.? I'm totally your honor. honor. And and we're here on we're here on a continuance from last week, Your Honor. Uh plaintiff asked time to to uh seek counsel. I received an email from who I believe is is plaintiff's uncle on Wednesday saying that he met with an attorney, Tim Visser, on Wednesday, did not retain him, and his uncle tried to broker a deal as a non-attorney. Um, I, I don't think plaintiff is taking this seriously, Your Honor, and I don't think he's giving respect to this court. Oh, I'm very, okay. very frustrated with how, how this played out this past week. Okay. Well, uh... what, 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 what we would like, Your Honor, is a is a six o'clock exchange. Your Honor, I object. Okay, sir, don't interrupt. Uh, we would like a, a six o'clock exchange. Each, each party goes to the other party's house to pick up the child. Uh, plaintiff's requesting a 7 a.m. exchange, which is unreasonable for a young child, Your Honor. It's just, it, it, it makes no sense. We're also asking all future communications to be through the um, MI Resolve family system, through the front of court, because there's a lot of harassment going on here, Your Honor, and my client does not deserve Okay. For that. Okay, Mr. Oak, uh, what's your response? Taking this seriously, 6 p.m. is still an issue. 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. would be more practical. Why would six, why would six not work? Uh, due to my work schedule. What time do you get out of work, sir? So the reason why. Hey, okay, that wasn't my. I asked you a question. What time do you get out of work? So I deliver the mail for the post office, and I do not have a set time that I get out of work. Okay. Your Honor, can my, my client explain what happened on the Saturday, just this past Saturday, two days ago, the exchange? Um, no, I, I want to hear from the plaintiff and see what his response is. Okay. Mr. Luke, uh, why, why, why does 6 o'clock not work? You could have, if you have relatives or et cetera, you could have somebody else pick up the child if that's the case, if you have difficulties on a particular night, but... We, we've got to have an exchange time at some point. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, 7 a.m. would work perfect for me so that I can pick up my child in the morning and get back to work on time. It's a two-hour-plus drive, and I start at 10 a.m. in the morning, and that is seven days a week. Okay. So again, Your Honor, I'd like my my client to explain the the exchange on Saturday, two days ago. Okay. My well, Honor. let's kind of focus on the the exchange time and see what works and what doesn't work there, because that sounds like that will take care of issues, hopefully. So, uh, understood, Your Honor. This is a young child. Uh, Seven a.m. is very very early for a young child to be woken up and transported several hours. It's not in the in the child's best interest at all. Like you said, plaintiff can have family members uh, make the exchange if his if his work gets in the way for for a, a given Saturday or a given Wednesday. Okay. You know, six six p.m. It is is reasonable. Okay. Uh, Mr. Luke, could you have, uh, do you have family members that are available or somebody that the child's familiar with and comfortable with that could, uh, 
handle the transportation in the event that you can't? Your Honor, I do not. Um, my family had issues with me dropping, with them dropping her off for me as it was. So that's why I'm trying to take responsibility myself. And and again, Your Honor, I would I would like you to hear from my client regarding this past week as well. I'm not going to take case. testimony from your client, sir. Your representative, you can uh, state what issues have to be uh, addressed. So Saturday's exchange, Your Honor, uh, my client contacted plaintiff, arranged for the 12 o'clock exchange as usual. She arrived. He was not there. She contacted him. He said that his mother was picking the, the child up. She contacted the mother. The mother had not even left the home. She was still an hour plus away because plaintiff told his mother not to pick, her, pick the child up. This is what's happening, Your Honor, over and over and over again. Plaintiff is not taking this matter seriously. And it's affecting my client and the child, more importantly, the child. Okay. Well, what, what I'm going to do in this matter is I am going to change... I'm going to change the uh, pickup time in this matter. We'll change it to 6 o'clock p.m. from 12 o'clock noon. And uh, we'll and have can... the exchange occur at the uh, Speedway gas station in Portland. That's the halfway point. And uh, what happens is if the parties have to wait one half hour, that's uh, appropriate for weather conditions, et cetera, if in fact uh, the exchange, if the other party to pick up the child is not present by 6.30, the other parent can take the child up and have the child until the next exchange time. And they simply waive that particular time that they have. So Mr. Luke, if you don't show up by 6.30 or have a relative or somebody familiar with the child to pick the child up, you waive your parenting time. That's the way it'll work. So, Your Honor, would you entertain the the uh, requirement that all communication be through MI Resolve Family System? The, these parties have communication issues, and I would like the court to or the front of court to monitor. So that if I'm not going to have the front of the court monitoring their communication, the court would, if you want to have a place where the court would have access to, like our Family Wizard or App Close or something like that. I have no problem with ordering communication through one of those uh, apps or something of that nature. We would be acceptable with that, Your Honor. Okay. Why don't we do it through app close? Because there's not the charge that there is with our family wizard. So state that the parties would communicate through app close and uh, that that's how the communication would occur. Okay. Mr. Snyder, you can prepare that order and submit under seven day. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Here you go. Have a good day. You too. Your Honor? Yes. I would just like to state that 6 p.m. is setting me up to fail. Like, I have a job I have to provide for my child. That's why I'm requesting at 7 a.m. Typical day. We're not going to do it at 10 a.m. It's The child would have to be up at 5 a.m. to do the exchanges, and it's just too, it's just too early. What I proposed is me driving the entire way at 7 a.m. because Mr. Snyder's client does not want to drive at that time. Well, I've, I've said that you'll meet at a halfway point. So you'll meet at a halfway point at 6 o'clock p.m. If you can't do it, you'll have to get somebody else to handle the transportation, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Reed on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion for Supervised parenting time. Court will note that uh, uh, the defense, or excuse me, the plaintiff has filed an answer in this matter. Have you seen that answer, Ms. Reed? Yes, we have. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Reed. Thank you, Your Honor. The parties in this matter share one minor child that's Elizabeth, and she's nine years old. She has come home to my client covered in bruises and with black eye. The child has been reporting that she's being beaten with coat hangers. By the plaintiff and being pinched by her siblings and the plaintiff is not doing anything to stop this. She's not wanting to go back home to the plaintiff. Um, CPS is investigating and Megan Laird with Calhoun County CPS has interviewed my client and the minor child 
Um, we did receive the answer to our motion. My client denies the allegations regarding the doctor's appointments, the lice, the marijuana use. She has moved um, because leases have terminated and to actually find stable housing. Um, she finds it surprising that the plaintiff would say that the plaintiff doesn't know where the child is as she's been sending the school schedules to plaintiff. But we are requesting supervised parenting time at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Norris, go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, yes, sir. I received all the, the information as well. And from my end of it, sir, I've never had Elizabeth uh, come to me and say, I don't want to be there. She's always acted happy. I mean, I've gotten her covered in bruises as well, multiple times over. She has been sent to my house sick times than not. Um, my daughter has told me that, oh, mom says it's just. I'm going to object, your honor, to hearsay. Um, Go ahead. I'm, it's a my, motion hearing. I'm not taking it to. Uh, as testimony go ahead um and so on and so forth i feel on both sides things are you know maybe misspoken she is a nine-year-old you know i don't believe that she's lying about everything and i don't think that maybe she's not exaggerating the truth on either end i personally have never hit her with a coat hanger i have personally Anytime that her siblings at my house have intervened, I've always tried to separate them, stop the situation every time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, in this uh, matter, obviously, there's allegations being made both ways in this uh, particular matter. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer the matter to the referee for a referee hearing in this uh, particular case so we can get to the bottom of things and find out what's happening. Uh, but uh, that's that's what the court will do is refer to the referee where you'll be able to have your hearing and present all your evidence at that time. So you're free to go today and have a good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The court will note the appearance of Mr. Magnuson on behalf of the front of the court. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to set aside referee uh, order in this matter. Mr. Snyder, uh, you can proceed. So um, when I got the child support order, I looked it over and it said that I have my son, Grayson James Schneider, 76 overnights a year. But when I did the math, I have him a minimum of 128 overnights a year. And the order also stated that I gross, my monthly gross income is $3,235 a month, but it's really an average of 2,800 a month gross. Well, as I as I read through the motion, Mr. Snyder, the court came to the kind of the impression of saying, how's the court to know that you didn't supply a transcript or anything else other than your bare allegations? So how how's the court to know what the referee based that on if I don't have any record? Yeah, um, I did put a bunch of my check stubs since April um, on it and did the two overnights every week times 52 weeks a year and then the extra days a month and got 128 days. Okay. It still doesn't show me what the uh, testimony was at the referee hearing or what the referee decided the information on. So I, I can't say that the referee made a factual or legal error if I don't know what the referee decided the case on. Well, let All me right. hear from Mr. Magnuson. Mr. Magnuson? Uh, yes. Um, I can only indicate from my notes, Your Honor, 
that the referee, the income that was attributed to Mr. Snyder was based on his uh, job at Phil Walters Auto. Um, the referee used $17 an hour for 42 and a half hours per week on average, um, basically taking the regular income um, that came to 2,958 per month with the average overtime, um, taking it up to $3,235 per month. So that was what was included. It was, and I would note that both parties were present and did provide testimony. And, and that's what um, Mr. Moeller based his finding on um, the testimony of the parties and Mr. Snyder's testimony as to his work at Phil Walters. Okay. Mr. Snyder, any response to that? <clears throat> nope. I don't have anything about that. It was my, my, my main concern was mostly the overnights. Okay. Well, what you're going to have to do, sir, is you're going to have to order a copy of the transcript and provide that to the court. That's the only way the court can review and see what the referee uh, had to look at as far as testimony to be able to make its, his decision in this matter. So what I'll do is allow you to uh, have time to get the transcript. Once you get the transcript, you can renew your motion and reschedule it, re-notice it at that time after the court would have an opportunity to review it. Okay. Um, and would I be able to get that down at the courthouse? Yep. You can make you can make a request for that uh, through the uh, referee through the front of the court and uh, get a hold of a copy of that transcript. All right, thank you. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to set aside default and or default judgment. Mr. Carmucci, you can proceed. How you doing, Judge Kirkham? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Once again, we're here. Uh, we, I'm going to try to keep this short and simple. I don't have a, a good relationship with my three kids, with Carson A. I don't have an emotional um connection with them as my other kids they don't look nothing like me and i'm asking you to uh grant me a genetic test for kaz and charlie um just for the sake of my mental health my mental health has took a huge decline with uh best friends relationships my job uh because because of this situation with carjanae so I'm just asking for a genetic test so we can move forward. Okay. Well, sir, in this matter, you moved to set aside the default and default judgment. You didn't mention anything in that about any DNA test. Correct. Okay. Well, I can't just, you just can't come to a hearing and bring up new issues that were not pled. The matter is before the court on the motion to set aside default and default judgment in this particular case. Uh, you can, there's different requirements if you are going to contest paternity and you'll have to file a motion to contest paternity, setting forth factual basis as well as the legal basis for your motion, which is different from this motion. So you can't come in at, again at the time of this hearing and change why we're here because you came out. up with a different idea. Okay. Uh, I had a situation with another woman by the name of Caitlin, Caitlin Rose. Same okay. situation. I, I, I don't care about any other third parties. That's not an issue here. Okay. We're dealing with, with Miss Clark in your case, and that's it. Miss Clark, uh, do you have anything to add in in this matter? No, I don't. Uh, oh. If he wants to do a DNA test, I would rather him do all three of my children instead of just the two. Okay. Well, okay. Well, in this matter, uh, again, the parties can do what they want. If you want to submit the DNA test, that's fine. 
in this matter, though, uh, the notice of hearing for entry of the default judgment was sent at least four day, 14 days prior to that hearing. Uh, Michigan Court Rule 3.210 parens 6 parens A provides that the motion to set aside the default judgment must be filed within 21 days after the default judgment was entered and if there is good cause shown. In this case, uh, the judgment was entered back in October, October 10th of 2023. Clearly, you've missed the 21 days in this uh, particular matter and you've not shown good cause. The court will deny the request to set aside the default judgment in this matter. If you wish to address paternity, you can, if you get agreement with Ms. Clark to do so, you can do that, or otherwise you'll have to file a motion to do that, sir. Okay, so I have to We're find in another... agreement. How do we go about that? We have to do that separately from right now? Yep, you'll have to do it separate from this because I don't have that motion before me. Okay. I mean, if the two of you agree and you want to have DNA testing done on your own, you can do that. But there's no basis for the I'm court to for order it because I have no motion before me asking for that. It's, that's what I'm I sorry, was wondering Judge. This is the only. Out. That's the only motion that I could find that could help me. I didn't know well, there was a motion for the uh, the paternity. So I yes, I'll there is. There is. You can get on any of the uh, sites like MichiganLegalHelp.org. They have all of the paperwork at that site for uh, again for. Uh, setting aside paternity, and you'll have to file that, but this isn't the appropriate motion for that. So, uh, okay. court deny the motion to set aside. Ms. Clark, I'll ask that you would do an order setting aside the, the, the or denying the motion to set aside the default judgment, and you can submit that under seven day notice of entry. That will okay. be the order of the court. You're free to go. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Yeah. In this matter, if I reviewed the uh, referee's order, it stated in that order that uh, that order was by consent of the parties, that order being entered on September 10, 2024. So I'm in a bit of quandary. How could the referee make a factual or legal error if, in fact, the parties consented to the order? I At the time, yes, I did consent to it. And then I did some more digging and I didn't feel like I was able to say everything I needed to say the meeting prior to that. Okay. Well, let me tell you, when you consent to an order, that's the order. And the motion to set aside the referee is not the proper math method to proceed because the referee didn't make a determination. So you can't allege that the referee made a factual or legal error when the referee simply uh, affirmed your consent and your agreement with the other party. So the court doesn't find any basis to grant your motion to set aside the referee because it was a consent order. So the court will deny your order in this matter. And uh, if you have another basis at some point, you can always file a motion but this isn't the proper motion to file. Everybody that I talked to at the courthouse, the circuit court said that I could file against that. Well, I have no idea what they told you, but again, if it's a consent order, to, to set aside the referee order, you have to show that the referee made a factual or a legal error. Well, when you consent to it and you put an agreement on the record, the, the referee isn't making an order. The referee isn't making a determination. He's only affirming what you agreed to. So it's not a proper means to set aside the uh, the consent order. So court will, I didn't, deny, court will deny your request, sir. I didn't know that I couldn't consent to it. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I can't, can't deal with that. I'm just saying it's not a proper motion in this and, matter. So I'm denying it. One thing I did agree to that did get changed was he said child support wouldn't change and the head of household wouldn't change at all. And both of those have changed. Well, 
All I can say is that, again, it was a consent order. That's it. I've denied the uh, request. And if you have another basis to proceed, you'll have to file a motion and do so. Thank you, sir. You're free to go. Mr. Winters, uh, just for your information, we, we had previously called your case. It was set for 9 o'clock. We just called it just a few minutes ago. And it was, at nine? It was set for 9 o'clock a.m. Oh, it was not. I thought it, I put down 9.30. I apologize. Nope. No, it was 9 o'clock. So what we did is we uh, dismissed the motion. I will tell you when we I looked at it, it showed you had a DNA test in this matter, but that DNA test was not a certified laboratory. Okay? So the court cannot accept the results of that test, being it's not certified laboratory. They have to be certified by... Uh, international uh, blood bank, et cetera, and it wasn't. So you're going to have to get a different DNA test in this matter from a certified lab, uh, include that with your new motion, and then refile your new motion, okay? Okay, how do I uh, do the DNA do the um, court? Well, just you'll just have to look. Get online, do it. There's a number of uh, of uh, facilities that are certified. Uh, there's one that we see a lot. It's DNA Diagnostic Center, and uh, they do most of them are from there, and they are certified, so that would qualify. Okay, so I got to take the miracle and myself down there. Yep. Well, yeah, you, you you can just, yeah, you're going to have to have the uh, swabs taken and then send them in. And they do a chain of custody as well. Uh, so that's how you're going to have to do it. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. You have Thank a good you. day, sir. You too. Bye-bye. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Schaefer on behalf of the plaintiff, Mr. Bland on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to set aside default and or default judgment. Mr. Bland. Thank you, Your Honor. It's really pretty simple, I guess, at this point. Uh, I think both parties were pro per. Um, there has been a filing by dad for uh, a judgment of custody. And uh, at one point in time, I believe it was around June 28th, he filed a, a default entry. I don't believe a default judgment has been filed at this point. But in any event, um, there's been, and I don't want to get into the reasons why or whatever, but the, the fact is at this point, there's been somewhat of a disconnect between mom and the children. Uh, she's simply seeking an opportunity to litigate that, to try to set a reasonable parenting time schedule. And um, uh, I think that's always in play. I, I don't fault dad for, he's certainly entitled legally to enter a default, but uh uh, I think it's a little unusual in this type of case, given given everything that's going on, as opposed to a divorce case. So however we term it, however we handle it, Judge, we're just looking for an opportunity to um, get a judgment regarding parenting time in order and support. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schaefer? Uh, Your Honor, um, I don't think uh, they're entitled to uh, uh, setting aside the default uh, because uh, they haven't... Uh, properly alleged a good cause or meritorious defense by affidavit. Um, so I, for that reason alone, I think it needs to be uh, uh, denied. I understand that uh, the court needs to have a hearing on custody issues. Uh, and I think they're, they're probably able to participate in that, but I think the default ought to stand and uh, this matter go forward to make the determination in relation to what's in the best interest of children. Thank you. Well, the court uh, does agree that, uh, again, the reason set forth in the motion, uh, the defendant believing she would be able to work something out is not good cause. So the court will deny the motion to set aside the default, but the court will allow the defendant to be involved to contest custody, parenting time, et cetera. Uh, so, Mr. Bland, you can prepare the order denying your motion, but uh, setting the matter for mediation, talk to Mr. Schaefer and work out 
who you want to be the mediator, uh, include that in the order, and then uh, you can submit it under seven day. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Court will note that this matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to set aside the referee order in this uh, particular matter. Uh, Mr. Myrick, uh, as I look through the file, you stated that you had not received the uh, paperwork for the hearing on September 4, 2024, but that paperwork was sent to your address, which is the same address that you filed with your motion. Uh, no, no, sir. I, I, I was talking about the first letter that they mailed off. I think it was it was either May 5th or June 5th. They sent out a first letter uh, to let me know about the review. And it also stated in there that she was my daughter was not going to be with her mom. She was going to be with her grandmother because Joy said she ran away to her mother house and didn't come home. And so. It also stated that I didn't object to that. And so I was never given the opportunity to object to her even being at her grandmother house because she could have came and stayed with me. And so they sent that to 1631 Gresham Road, apartment D, as in David. They sent that letter to that address. And so I didn't even get uh proper understanding of what was going on until the second letter came. And the second letter came, um, I want to say it was like July 3rd. Um, and during that time, I only had until the 4th of July to have that turned in. or I would have been uh, forfeited from not being able to speak up for myself in this matter. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Well, what, what you're going to need to do, sir, in any event, you're going to have to file a motion either to change custody and or parenting time or both. And you'll have to allege proper cause, change of circumstances, and file that motion, notice it up, and then the court will hear your motion at that time, okay? Can I ask you a question? Sure. So when I did get the mail... It was it told me that the hearing with with referee Snyder was going to be um, it was going to be about the parenting time and the review. So I did try to talk to him about that, the parenting time. And he he also told me about getting custody. My daughter would be 18 years old in less than three months. Oh, OK, so, so it's a moot point then. Sir? Yes. No, I, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I said it's a moot point then if she's going to be 18 because the court has no jurisdiction over her after she's 18. And it would take you, if you file your motion, schedule a hearing, it's not going to be done probably until close to that three months anyway. So, yes, sir. And so I was uh, hoping to have some type of parenting time before she turned 18 so they wouldn't not give it to me over the past since 2008 when I moved to Georgia I've always been very communicative with the court and with my daughter mom and he, she has never allowed my daughter to come see me and okay. so until I started going through this right here I didn't know I could do all of this stuff by myself so that was proper uneducation on my on my behalf yeah. but I thought I would have to pay for a lawyer and I wasn't in a situation where I could pay for a lawyer so I never had the chance to you, do you can file you can file a motion for parenting time not the motion to set aside the referee that's not the proper motion you can file a motion for parenting time setting forth the factual basis for doing so and then the court will consider that but quite frankly uh in this uh, particular matter, again, it's a matter of what, you know, at your, at your daughter at her age, she's almost 18, so she's going to have a say-so on that. It's a matter of does she wish to come or does she not wish to come and stay with you? I have no idea. I won't know until the motion would be filed. You have a right to file a motion. That's up to you, but you have to consider what your daughter is going to want to do as well. Yes, sir. That's understandable. Okay. Okay. 
Go ahead. You can file that, and the court will hear it at that uh, time. Okay. Um, and so a part of the objection also was, um, so when I talked to um, referee Snyder, he he also seen that I didn't get any credit for my five kids, uh, which four is actually with me. Um, my other fifth child, she graduated high school uh, in May. So I'm I'm almost done with her her child support order, and she's in college right now, um, being going to school to be a psychiatrist. Yeah. And so whenever they estimated how much money that I I gross every month, that was an inaccurate number because, like I told referee Snyder, um, you know I work for FedEx, and so everybody reads the news as far as you know this being an election year and the amount of freight that's actually going through the system is not the same. And so this number that y'all that they calculated on me making every month uh, is not an accurate number to be able to give an accurate amount of how much I can actually pay a month. I also told them in the review and with referee Snyder that, you know, me and my wife have three kids and two of our kids are twins and they have a disability. And so I don't qualify for Medicaid. And so my, my insurance only covers a certain amount of money. And with the ABA and the therapies, that's like $150 a week that we have to pay with co-pays just for them to have the therapies that they need. Yep. Um, put, put all of that in your motion, sir, and then file it and we'll address it. Well, well it's, in, it's in the motion, sir. It's in there. Well, it's not in the motion before. The motion you sent me was a motion to set aside the referee order. And uh, so if you're going to file a new motion before me, set forth all of that information so that we can review it and consider it. Um, I, don't I, don't know what you, I don't know what you file with the referee. So No, no, I'm, 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 talk, I'm talking about this motion, sir. It's, it's on there. Um where I said I didn't get credit for five kids or health insurance. Like I'm I'm looking at the motion right now. So that was that was one of my reasons for the objection. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Well, we can bifurcate it and uh I could send it back to the referee on the issue of support, and then you would have to file your separate motion on parenting time. So it's it's up to you if you want to do that or just handle it all together. Um, I mean, I'll do whatever I need to do. This is like the first time I'm going through any of this stuff. So, I mean, yeah. I'll do, I do whatever I need to do to make sure that the information is correct and the amount that's being asked for for me to pay is correct. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, that, that, and, and so I got a letter last week a uh, notice of redirection or abatement of child support. And so now they're saying that my daughter is not with her grandmother anymore and that she's actually back with joy. Okay. And so they abated her mother and gave it back to joy. And so it, it's a lot of things that's, that's happening in a small amount of time. Um, and it's inaccurate information. And so, um, I just, like I said, I'm not trying to not pay anything. I just want to make sure that all of the numbers is correct. Okay. What what I'll what I'll do is I'll refer the matter back to the referee to consider your the uh, second family uh, deduction, and uh, then anything else as it relates to parenting time. File your other your additional motion. Okay. All right. So parenting time motion and. Yep. Uh, Okay, uh, I just want to make sure I write this down before I get off the phone with you. Okay, well, write it down. We need to move on to another hearing. So do that, and uh, the referee should contact you about, again, the uh, a sub basically a supplemental hearing, uh, and it relates to your other children, the deduction. And okay. the health insurance, yes, sir, and the health insurance, too. Well, I don't know what the referee is going to do on health insurance, because, uh, but 
I'll refer it back to the referee. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. All right.